Hello, all my Juki friends. My name is Alba, and I would like to welcome you back to Live with Juki. Today, we're going to be working on a tote bag. And I really enjoy making this tote bag because of the details it has. It looks very complex and like you spent a lot of time or bought a very expensive bag, but it's actually quite easy. Today, I be, will be working on the DX2000 machine, and let me give you a sneak peek. This is the tote bag that I made for myself. I enlarged it a little bit from uh, the one we will be making, but I have nice long handles on it. And this is what I like is the envelope bottom on it. And it's a two color bag, so two fabrics are used. And it's just a really nice, easy bag. And even getting fabrics for it, if you have that pack of fat quarters that you got, it's a perfect project to do with fat quarters. But there's basically several pieces of fabric that are all the same size, so it just makes it easy to do shopping. The front of the bag or the outside fabric are two pieces that are 15 by 22. The lining pieces that go on the inside of the bag are 15 by 22. And the bottom pieces, also two pieces, are 15 by 22. And on the fabrics, I interface fabrics if I am using quilting cotton, a lightweight to medium weight fabric. And um, the interfacing that I really like to use is the Pellon um, Shape Flex. I had to take a peek to make sure I was saying that name right. And this is a fusible woven cotton. And I love it because it just gives enough crispness to the fabric. You could also use Deco Bond. You could also use a fusible batting or a fusible fleece. And the batting and the fleece are really good options if you want your bag to be padded. Let's say you're putting an iPad, a computer in there, and you just want a little bit of extra protection for those electronics. That's a really good choice. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to turn around and get to the bag and get to the sewing and I'll explain further. See you in a minute. Welcome back. So here I am in front of my DX2000 and I wanted to go over a couple of things that I set up for this project. Number one, in my machine, I have a denim needle, which is a size 16 needle. We will be going over lots of thicknesses and a lot of heavy material. So I want to make sure that I have that appropriate needle in my machine for the project. For the most part, we will be on a stitch length of 2.4. Same thing to accommodate the varying weights and thicknesses and amounts of fabric. So those are the setups for my machine. And as we get into the sewing, I will go over any changes that I make. Now I'd like to show you the fabric pieces. And I've prepped a lot of these pieces ahead of time. So I have my two front pieces and I have put interfacing on those. And the interfacing that I've used is the Pellon Shape Flex. But as I said, there's lots of different interfacings that can be used. And if you do want this padded or quilted, I would go with a fusible batting or a fusible feast fleece. So my two front fabrics, this is a quilting weight fabric, so I absolutely interface those. My bottom pieces are an upholstery weight fabric, and this is really thick and has a coating on the back side of it, almost rubbery. Because of the thickness of this fabric and how stiff it is, I did not interface that. 
And my lining pieces, which is also a quilting weight fabric, which I did interface. And my straps, I have sewn them ahead of time. I like a two, two and a half inch strap, and I did not find webbing that matched my pieces. So I sewed and faced a, a ribbon that I found that I really like. But this could be webbing, it could be fabric faced, it could be completely covered in fabric, however you would like your straps. And I have my two straps. So the first thing that we're going to do is get started for placing our handles on our bag. And what I am going to do is find the center of my front pieces of fabric. And I'm just folding them in half. And I am going to give that a quick press. Let me turn my iron on. I love having that small craft iron near my sewing machine. It makes that so much easier to work with. And I am going to move some pieces of fabric out of the way. And what I am going to be doing with that front piece, I am going to mark four inches from that center. I'm going to find that crease. I am going to put that marking on there. And when you mark, you just want to mark with something that will come off easily so that you don't get those lines staying on. I'm just using a piece of chalk. I want to make sure my lines on my ruler are the same color. Three, four. Perfect. And I am going to mark four inches, giving my handles, this is where my handles are going to be sewn onto. Now, what I like about this bag is that everything is done open. And I could clearly see where my handles are going, where my pockets are going. And what we will be doing is placing the handles on here. And I want to make a marking on my... handles. And I want to mark 12 inches from the bottom and put a mark on the handle. And this will be our stopping point. And you need that done on both sides. So here I have my handles from both ends. I'm going to mark that 12 inch line. And I'm using a chalk so that you could see my lines that I'm marking. So I have from the center, four inches to the right, four inches to the left. And on my handles, 12 inches from the top. Now, if you did want to put a pocket on here, I did a video on how to do these zippered bags. And this zippered bag could be placed underneath my handles and sewn in. Of course, I would be doing that with matching fabric. And I would like to show you on the bag that I've already done where I did that. And what I did is I did not sew my pocket down. That is completely up to you if you sew it down or not. But the reason I left this open is when I'm bringing this to classes, I have a rolling bag for my sewing machine. So this can get put right in the handles and hold all of my supplies. Or when I'm traveling to all the quilt shows, I use this to bring all of my belongings in. So just an idea for how you can further embellish the bag. Now, I'm going to be placing my straps right along that line and I am just going to place a couple of pins 
to hold that strap. And you want to make sure that your loop at the top is not twisted. And I'm bringing that strap right to the point where it covers that line that I made. And you just want to make sure that that loop is not twisted. Now, the straps are 42 inches. You can make them longer, shorter, according to what you like. And now what we will be doing is sewing and top stitching up one side, across that line that we did, and down the other side. And I might even do several stitchings on this to make it very durable. Now I'm using a bright blue thread so that you could see what I am doing. And this will be done on both sides of that front. And I'm going to just line that up on my machine. And the first stitch that I am going to do is a top stitch right along the edge. And as I said, I'm probably going to go back and top stitch also along that webbing. Don't be afraid of doing multiple lines of stitching to really secure this bag. And I am at a medium speed at a stitch length of 2.4. And I am going to back tack at that beginning and end to secure my stitching and just secure my bag handles. And I am going to show you one. And I'm just making sure that I'm nice and lined up. I'm stopping at the line that I drew because I am going to go across and down that other side. And I don't like to sew the handles all the way to the very top just to make it easier to use that tote bag. And I'm going right along the edge of that strapping. And back tacking. And let me show you that stitching. Now, as I said, I may put my quarter inch foot on there and do several rows. But one thing that I really like to do is use a triple stitch. And I will show you that on that beige center. Now I'm getting my fabric out of the way. And the triple stitch looks like three lines of stitching and is on many of our electronic machines. And when I do the triple stitch for top stitching, I like to make the length all the way to the longest setting that the machine will allow. It just gives a very decorative finish, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I am lining up my foot so that I am in the correct position. And I am going to do that on one side and just show you how beautiful that looks. And I'm actually going to stop so that I could show that to you. Look at how beautiful that looks, that detail that it gives it. And the tote bags, when you're making your own, it's all about being able to add those special details.
Now we're going to continue this stitching to do the straps on both the bag front and back. And I'll be back real shortly to show you what that looks like. Now I've sewn both of my straps on my outside of my bag and I wanted to let you see how that decorative stitching can really add a lot of personality to your bag. So don't be afraid of doing multiple lines of stitching. It also really reinforces the handle and makes sure that it will be a nice sturdy bag. Now, I've done this to both of my outside pieces, and the next piece that we will need is one piece of the bottom. Now, my bottom, I used a heavier weight fabric. This is an upholstery fabric that is water resistant, so it's a very heavy fabric. And what we will be doing with that is sewing it on to the bottom of the bag and I've switched to a quarter inch foot. I happen to like the foot with the guide on it because it gives me nice even stitches and I am on a straight stitch. Again, my stitch length is at 2.4 and I am going to sew all the way down and I am going to add this to both of my outside pieces. So this will be in the center. And I will show you that momentarily. And just be cautious of going over those straps. So here we have our bottom sewn to the top. And you'll take notice that I've pinned my handles to um, the inside of my back just to keep them out of the way so that they uh, do not get in my way when I am sewing. And I am now going to sew that opposite side. And that denim needle is really helpful when you're going over those straps and that heavier weight. Always have the appropriate size needle for the project you're working on. Glides right over that thickness. And now what I have is one very long piece with both my top of my bag at both ends, and this will be my bottom. Now I'm going to show you how I create that envelope bottom. But first what I want to do is give a quick press to this seam. And what I will be doing is on one seam, I will be pressing that seam towards the top of my bag. And on one seam, I will be pressing that towards the bottom so that when I stitch this, I do not have a tremendous amount of bulk. Now I've ironed my seams, one going towards the bag top and one going towards the bag bottom. And I'm adding some top stitching a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I use my quarter inch foot so that that guide goes right along that ditch or the seam so that I get nice even top stitching. And this has been done to both sides. Now we're going to start assembling our envelope bottom. And I really love this detail. 
So what we are going to be doing is matching up our seams. And because I did that pressing one in one direction, one in another, those seams just nest and will match up beautifully. I will be adding some pins. And if you are using really heavy fabric like I am, don't try and pin through that heaviness. Go through that lighter weight. And I am going to pin matching up my corners and matching up my seam. And now that bottom portion is where um, the magic will happen and we will create that envelope bottom. Now, I know that I want about a four inch flat bottom on mine. So I am folding and going to the halfway point and I am going to stick a pin at that center of my bottom and I will be aligning my ruler and marking two inches. And I'm going to mark that with a pin. And I am going to do that on both sides. I am going to put that two inch mark from the center giving me my measurements to make that four inch boxed bottom. So now I have my three pins and what I will be doing is that pin that is in the center is going to go towards the top of my bag and I will match up those pins that were my four inch mark. So I have a V in my bag and I want to make sure that the bottoms are matched up nicely. And here is where some uh, clips would come in handy to clip that. So I will be going through what looks like a V at the bottom my intersecting seams. Now, of course, to make this bottom wider, if I wanted a bigger, flatter bottom, I would go deeper with this. So you could really customize the look of your bag that way. And we will sew straight through that seam using my quarter inch foot. And I'm gonna go back to my straight stitch on this. And I like to slow down going over those bulky seams. Just to make sure that nothing shifts. And I'm also going to back tack and reinforce that seam. And I'm just making sure that everything is lining up nicely, especially my ends. And I've placed my pins on the inside of my fabric so that they could stay there as I am sewing. And I am just going back and reinforcing my bottom. And I will be doing this on both sides, but I want to show you how that creates that beautiful envelope when it is open. And I'm just going to that corner in my bag And when that opens up, it forms that V or that envelope at that bottom. 
Now we will be doing this, as I said, on both sides of my bag. And also I will be repeating this with my two pieces of lining and my second bottom. Now the lining, the only difference is it will not have handles. It will be done just like this front. I'm gonna continue sewing and let you see that progress. Now I showed how to measure that gusseted bottom for a specific measurement on the bottom. I'm also going to show you something that I like to do, and that's that maximum amount of the gusset. So on that bottom piece, I have a pin right at my center, and I have stopped my stitching right at the intersection of where that bottom meets up to the top of the bag. And I will bring my pin right into that intersection and as you could see, I'm a little bit off there on that bottom so I can adjust and wiggle and move my fabric until I have that meeting up beautifully. And I am going to sew through all of those pieces. Again, I'm making sure that my bottoms match up beautifully. And I am back tacking to secure that stitching at the bottom. Now I have done this to my bag and my lining. So here is my lining that has been turned inside out. And you will see that that gives me a much bigger gusset and that envelope goes right to that point of where the seams match up. Now my lining piece, I did not add handles as it does not need it. And you'll notice that I added a little bit of surging to the top because my lining fabric was fraying so much. And I just wanted to keep that under control. So we have our lining that has been turned inside out and we are going to put this inside of this bag. I'm just going to tuck it in there and I will be matching up my side seams. And again, I have one seam going to the right, one seam going to the left so that those seams match up. And I am doing the same with the opposite side. Making sure that those match up. And I will add more pins securing this in place. And what I want to do is make sure to leave an area open for me to turn the bag inside out. So I'm gonna be back shortly once all the pins are in place. Now I have put my outside of the bag and the inside of the bag right sides together and I am sewing through the top. And you'll notice that I have a pin still in the center of my bag and that's where we had pinned our handle so that it would be out of place. Now I like to do a half inch seam allowance on the top and I'm going to show you one of the things that I like to do with a half inch seam allowance. I am using my quarter inch foot and I have gone around my bag using a quarter inch seam allowance. I am now placing my guide on that previously sewn line to give it a double stitch, more secure stitch, and give me my half inch seam allowance. Now I've left an opening on both seams where you could see my hand on the back of the machine, and you want to leave enough of an opening to be able to turn this inside out. And let me show you when I go around and I slow down my machine, 
you'll notice that I've taken off my accessory tray and I'm utilizing the free arm to be able to do this circular top, making it much, much easier. And all I am doing is that quarter inch guide is going right along my previously sewn line, giving me my half inch seam allowance, but also allowing that double stitching, as I said. And I am going to do this all around the top of the bag, leaving that opening. Having that free arm makes a job like this just so much easier. And I'm reaching the point of where my opening is. And I am going to stop. And I left a nice size opening for me, for me to be able to turn this inside out. And I am going to do that right now. So you just keep pulling and pulling until both pieces are outside of the bag. And just be careful of those pins that we left for our handles because they will get you. So now here I have the front of my bag, the lining of my bag. I am going to remove those pins and I'm going to put the lining on the inside of the bag. What we have is a fully finished tote bag. And what I will do next is iron the top so that I could get ready to top stitch. And I really like having a nice travel iron that gets as hot as my full size iron. So I am just manipulating the fabrics with my fingers and I am going to press, 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 and I'll see you soon at my machine. Now I'm top stitching the top of my bag and as I pressed where that opening was, I also folded and pressed that nice and even. Another tip I'm going to give you is to start somewhere behind the handle so that the overlapping of your stitches is not as noticeable. And I'm just going to finish up that top stitching to complete that. And again, my overlap is behind my handle and I'm going to do a lock stitch on that end to further lock that up. So here I have my completed bag and I really love that detail of that envelope bottom. It's just a nice uh, professional way to complete your bag. That top stitching adds a beautiful touch. And as I said, when these pieces are flat, it's very easy to add pockets on the outside, on the inside. You could easily add a zipper. You could add in and add more embellishment to this bag. But it's just a beautiful basic tote bag. And as you could see, this is a really nice large size. Perfect for groceries, the beach for your sewing class, for all of your items that you're working on for your projects. So I hope you enjoy the tote bag and don't forget to leave comments and send me pictures of what you create. Until next time, bye-bye.